So in this little video, I will explain how to use phase diagrams for different equations to understand what they imply. So here is something I prepared earlier. Well, it's a start. What you have, what we start out with first is our different equations. I have two different homogeneous different equations, one stable because that coefficient is smaller than one, 0.7 and one which is explosive or unstable where this coefficient is 1.2, it's larger than one. So how do we use these phase diagrams to understand how these, um, what these different equations imply? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use different color. So here we go, green. With green, I will now draw into our diagram these different equations. But first you have to understand what is on this diagram on the axis. We have xt on the, vert on the horizontal axis and xt plus one on the vertical axis. Because that's what our difference equation does, is it gives us a relationship between xt and xt plus one. Today's observation and tomorrow's observation. Okay, so this is just a linear relationship between xt plus one and xt. It doesn't have a constant because it's a homogeneous genius difference equation. So it will go for the origin. And here for the first one, the slope is 0 0.7. So it's flatter than the 45 degree line. That would be one. That would be the slope of one. So it's somewhat flatter. So let me just draw that in. This is meant to be a line. Okay. So this is really xt plus one is equal to 0 0.7 times xt. So how do we work this now? Let's say we are starting at a particular point. It doesn't really matter where you start. You get the same sort of pattern. Let's say that's your first observation. So let's say period zero is our t. Then we can ask of the difference equation, i.e. of the green line, okay, if today we are here, where will we be at x t plus one? Well, you go to the, to your difference equation and you read off on the vertical axis where you're going to be. You're going to be here. That is going to be x1. Okay, this difference equation told us if we are at a particular x0 where we're going to be. But now I want to know, ah, okay, if you're in x1, where will we be the period after in, XT, in x2? So that means this x1 will now turn into our original observation. And we're going to use this 45 degree line to basically transpose that x1 onto this horizontal axis. Okay, so the 45 degree line, and we're going down here. So here is going to be our x1. So what have we done? Basically, we moved from this point to this point. And how that looks in the phase diagram is like this. Okay, because we transcribed it via the 45 degree line. So, okay, we're in x1. Let's ask where are we going to end up in x2. So we'll go back to our difference equation here. And then we go across and we read off, well, this is going to be x2. And we say, okay, brilliant. We now know where we're going to be in x2. Let's find out where we are going to be in x3. So x2 will again turn we'll again have to translate that, and we translate that by uh, the 45 degree line. Okay, so on our phase diagram, it will look like this. We moved over here. And so again, we'll do it one more step, but perhaps you can already see what's happening is, we're now asking, okay, if now we are in x2, where are we gonna be in x3? We'll ask the difference equation, the green line, we transcribe that over here, that's going to be x3. Again, we'll transpose that back via the 45 degree line. x3 is here. So the phase diagram will show this. And you can see what's going on here. We will just keep on going until we are at zero. So this is how a phase diagram works. And this is clearly sort of a stable relationship. We're going to our zero equilibrium here. So how is that going to look if we have a different type of difference equation? I use red for explosive because our coefficient here is 1.2. So we already know this is going to be an explosive process. So let's see if we start here at x0, what happens? 
First, we got to draw in our difference equation. The slope is 1.2. We don't have a constant. It's still a homogeneous equation. So we go for the origin slope of 1.2. So that means we're going to be a little bit steeper than this 45 degree line. Okay, so that's xt plus 1 is equal to 1.2 times xt. So we start here. We are asking our difference equation. Okay, if we are here at t equals 0, where are we going to be at time 1? We're going to the red line, the difference equation. We're reading this off here. This is going to be our x1. So, okay, we're there in x1. Let's transpose that x1 to the, to the horizontal axis so we can do the next step. So how do we do this? We go to the 45 degree line and project that down here. So what have we done? We moved this way. Okay. So now we're in x1. Where are we going to be in x2? We are asking our difference equation, the red line. We're going up here. Oh, okay, we're going to be here. This is going to be x2. Brilliant. So the question is now, however, where are we going to be in x3? So again, we transpose the x2 to the horizontal axis. We do that via the 45 degree line. So we're here, the x2, and so moved to here. And now we are asking where are we going to be in, x, in t equal 3? What is x3 going to be? We're going to ask our difference equation. We're going to be here, x3, and then we translate that again across. Okay, and we're going to be here. So you can see what's happening is we we'll, we'll just keep on going into this direction. And this is an explosive process. So I hope that helps you to understand how we use phase diagrams to understand the behavior of a difference equation, of a variable that is described by a difference equation.